Hey, what's up guys? I'm Bright Torn and welcome back to Victoria 3 as we are playing as the United States. So before we get started in today's episode, I did want to discuss two things. Now remember, whenever I have these beginning of the episode uh, discussions or little tutorial sections or whatever I'm doing, uh, I do try to remember to put a pinned comment with a timestamp. So for those of you who don't care about any of this and just want to skip to the gameplay, you can do that. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about is warfare. Uh, so had a, a lot of comments of people kind of suggesting what we should do next when it comes to the, to the, the next war since the one with Mexico obviously uh, didn't work out. So I've had a lot of people in the comments suggesting who we should uh, attack next, you know, Canada or Cuba or Haiti or whatever, uh, who we should plan to go to war with next. And I feel like it's uh, there's a little bit of a, a Hoi 4 mentality there. Uh, like, you know, in Hearts Farm 4, that's a, that's a war game. Uh, that's a game I, I typically play here on the channel. And uh, you're always either planning for the next war or doing the war. That's that's the point of that game. There's really not much else to do outside of warfare. Uh, so again, you're always uh, planning for war or, or making war. Uh, but this is not a war game at all. Uh, if I had to describe it as anything, it's probably an economic game. Uh, Herodox says it's a, a also focus on politics. I would kind of disagree because there's really not a whole lot to politics outside of the you know, passing the laws. Uh, you know, you just pass the laws. You don't really have to do much when it comes to balancing the, uh, you know, the interest groups. They kind of advertised it as that was a big focus, but there's really not much to it. Uh, even passing the laws, you just, you know, pick the next law you want to do. Uh, so I would say it's more about economics than anything else. And economics do play a huge role in the politics since, you know, that's going to determine who are the interest groups. Uh, you know, based on the, the buildings and stuff that you have. Firstly, I'm not sure how beneficial war actually is in the game. Obviously, the, the game hasn't been out that long, so we haven't really tested all this thoroughly. But to me, it seems like it will take a while before any war is uh, actually going to end up being profitable to you because wars are so costly. They cost a stupid amount, amount of money, you know, raising up your, your troops and paying for them and, and paying for all those extra supplies they need, the extra weapons, the extra ammunition. Uh, artillery, all that kind of good stuff. It's incredibly expensive. Uh, it costs, you know, tens and tens of thousands, you know, every week. So it costs a lot of money and it also costs lives. You know, you, you lose all those workers who die, all those potential workers who die, and then all those who are injured now become dependents. And so they can't work either. Uh, and, you know, you're gaining stuff from the war, obviously. You know, if you go over here and conquer Cuba, for, uh, for instance, you know, you're going to get more people. Uh, but, I just look at the the people. I guess we should look at it this way here. Uh, if we just look at Cuba here, you know their goal is to to build a plantation economy. You can see the the landowners are uh, the ones most in power here. You know we're over here industrializing and trying to decrease the power of the landowners, and they have a very agricultural economy over here. Uh, you know you are getting access to those resources that they have. Uh, so if you actually looked at the the state here and took a look at the the buildings they got you know you're gonna get access to all that sugar and tobacco coffee that's something we actually have to trade for uh, you got the banana plantations as well producing fruit uh, so yeah there's some some beneficial stuff here uh, so it's not that you're gonna get any benefits but overall like how much uh, is that benefiting you financially in the long run uh, maybe in the long run it, it helps but uh, you know the next couple of years it's certainly not gonna pay off uh, the war because the war was incredibly costly uh, the, the lives that you get, I mean, we're not even short on labor. Uh, we got plenty of labor, so don't actually need more people here. Maybe if we had a labor shortage, there'd be a reason to go conquer uh, a location that maybe has a lot of peasants. Uh, but Cuba doesn't even have a lot of extra peasants here. Uh, so, I mean, most of their stuff isn't even profitable right now. Uh, we'd have to see how it affect our economy overall. Again, some of this would be beneficial, I think, but is it uh, worth the cost uh, of doing the war? I'm not entirely sure. It's hard to say. I think we're going to have to kind of, you know, do some tests on this and really look into it. So this is actually accurate, uh, having war be very costly and not beneficial in the long run. There's only a few examples in history where I could say that a war was definitely financially and economically beneficial to the country who, you know, was involved in it. More often than not, uh, maybe in the, the long run, once they've you know, established their power of any, any new territory that they conquered and, and started to reap the benefits of that territory economically uh, for, for the most part wars are, are not beneficial with when once you consider their cost uh, the cost of the war and then what they actually gained for the the countries involved uh, most of the time they're they're not beneficial so it's actually accurate that that wars are uh, uh, it's questionable if they're 
uh, financially beneficial or not. I think that's that's accurate, so I'm glad that the game represents that. But in games, we'll often do war even when it's it's not beneficial just because warfare is fun. But I can't say that about Victoria. The warfare system is not fun. Uh, it's, it's very simple. Uh, there's really not much to it. Uh, doing the occasional war is is fun, I suppose. Kind of you know changes things up. That's why I wanted to do the war at Mexico. I was looking forward to it because it changed things up a little bit, kind of show the the warfare system. Uh, but when I did my Prussia campaign, uh, I was heavily focused on warfare. You know, I formed Germany. We had like multiple world wars where a bunch of great powers were involved. I conquered a bunch of territory here in Europe, and so I did a lot of warfare to really dig into the systems and 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 see how I feel about it. And I can say it's boring. Uh, when you do the occasional one, it's fine, but Warfare in this game is not entertaining to me. It's not engaging. It's an incredibly simple, hands-off system that just isn't very intriguing, uh, to me at least. Uh, so, I mean, we could do constant wars and be conquering everybody, but I don't know that I'd find that entertaining. I don't know if you guys would find that entertaining. Again, the warfare system just leaves a lot to be desired as of right now. Uh, it's just not a major part of the game. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's the other element. This is not exactly fun doing constant wars, so if it's not beneficial to your country and it's not fun, uh, you probably don't want to be doing constant warfare. And that doesn't mean we won't do any, it's just I think they should be, uh, the war should be spread out a bit. Uh, like if we look at Canada here, I don't think we should go after Canada until at the very least we've gotten this territory here peacefully. We have the option to do that, which we're currently working on with the Oregon border dispute once we finish this up. So we can get control of this all peacefully. And then of course, Wars can be a lot more uh, costly than you initially planned for them to be. Uh, especially if you start ramping up the infamy because you're doing a lot of warfare. That's what I saw at my Prussia campaign. Uh, everybody joins in against you. All the, the great powers. And, and so what happens is you have like a little war in Cuba or whatever. And, and it ends up being this huge conflict where you got to fight, you know, other great powers. Because uh, you're just you're just attempting to conquer Cuba. And now you're you're fighting, uh, you know, two different great powers that... They got involved with the war because your infamy is so high. Uh, so that's another reason why wars often are, are just not worth uh, the cost or the effort. So a lot of people in the comments are talking about that, so I did want to address it. The other thing that I've seen a lot of in the comments is questions regarding how I'm managing the economy in regards to uh, basically how many how many buildings I'm constructing at a time. Uh, so a lot of people are seeing like, uh, let's just take a look at an example here. Uh, we are building uh, something for fabric. I actually just did that here. I got us a cotton plantation. We're only doing one, right? Uh, how much does one cotton plantation actually produce? Uh, so if we looked at, can we hover over this and see? It's 160, right? That's how much it's going to uh, get us with full employment, right? And, and so if we look at how much we need here, and we are short by over a thousand. Uh, so that one, uh, that one building level is not going to solve the problem here. So a lot of people are asking me, why don't I build a bunch so that we can solve the issue, uh, get the sell orders a, a lot more closer to the buy orders? Uh, why am I gradually building? Well, there's a couple of reasons for that, guys. So, so first of all, the goal is not to get them balanced. Uh, I'm not even trying to get them balanced. We're not trying to get everything down to 0%. I mean, you could do that, I suppose, if you want to. But think about how that's going to impact uh, anybody who's producing that. Because it's, it's not always a bad thing if something is expensive. Uh, you you got to consider uh, both sides, uh, the producers and the, uh, uh, the buyers of it. Uh, so, the, you know, the people that are using it. And so in this case, our uh, cotton plantations would be affected. Uh, if we get the, the fabric costs too low, our cotton plantations aren't going to make as much money. Uh, so that's another thing to consider. You're not trying to get them all down to 0%. That's, just, in my opinion... That's not the way to play the game. When I'm constructing one building, all I'm trying to do is just get the, the price down a little bit. Just a little bit. That's why I'm constructing one. That's why I'm doing it gradually. How does it affect the economy? I actually don't want to see radical changes to the economy. I don't want to make big old massive changes unless something is incredibly expensive. Uh, you see the transportation is very expensive and we want more transportation uh, on top of the fact that it's already expensive. So we already need it for that. And so you can see we, we aren't building just one rail railway. We're building four right now. And we're going to keep building railways. Or actually, we're building five. Excuse me. Uh, so, so you know, with this, there, there's a reason to build a lot. But with these things, is there? I, I don't think so. I wouldn't say so. Just because it's got a thousand over, or close to a thousand, or over a thousand, uh, I, I don't think that means you need to build a bunch. And that's just my opinion, uh, based on you know, my experience playing the game so far. I don't think that's the best way to play. Uh, there's also other things that people aren't considering. Uh, the fact that this all adjusts itself. Uh, the system adjusts itself. You don't need to perfectly fix everything in the game. 
Uh, everything can can adjust itself based on the prices. So let's say that an input good for a factory is is too expensive, and then they can't afford to to buy as much, and then you know to be able to produce their full amount. So what will happen is eventually they'll run out of money, and then they'll start firing employees, right? Uh, so they'll fire those employees, and then that will result in them producing less of the good, uh, and thus requiring less of the input. And so then you'll have less buy orders and the price will start to be reduced. And eventually there'll be an equilibrium that is created where maybe they're not fully staffed. Maybe they only have 50% of their possible staff, but they're profitable because they'll keep on cutting staff until they're profitable. Uh, and you know maybe that becomes a problem if the uh, output good they're producing is now too expensive, uh, then you have an issue. And then you, know, you might see it and then be like, oh, I need to... Uh, to build more textile mills when in fact the problem is actually that the fabric is too expensive. So you do need to consider those things. Uh, but a lot of times, you know, it's going to create an equilibrium. You don't need to fix it. Uh, and it goes the same with, way with the, uh, the, the, the goods that the pops buy. You know, I think they do buy fabrics here. But let's just use uh, groceries for an example. So if the groceries gets too expensive, they'll just buy more grain or more fish. I mean, you can see that in the basic food need category here. Uh, they could also buy meat or fruit instead, uh, but meat, fruit, and groceries, those are all considered like more expensive ones, I believe. Uh, so for instance, if you look at the luxury goods, those are all in the luxury good category. So for the basic needs, I mean, the real competition is a grain and fish. I mean, that's what the majority of your poor pops are going to be buying is the grain or the fish. So, I mean, groceries getting too expensive. Yeah, it's going to affect pops to some degree, but not as much as you think. Uh, so that the actual buy orders will be reduced because the pops will buy something else if it gets too expensive. Uh, this whole system is designed to to, uh, to build a reach in equilibrium and to adjust itself. It doesn't require the player input constantly. And I think a lot of people don't understand that or, or maybe they just want to micro every single element of the economy. I, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but that's something to keep in mind. You don't have to make it perfect. You don't need to, to fix. Uh, that's what I think a lot of people are, are wanting to do. They want to fix it. Like, oh, there's a thousand shortage here. That's a, a major problem. Not really. <laughs> the uh, actual cost is 26 more expensive. That's not that big of an issue. Maybe I think it's a little bit too expensive, so I'm going to build one just to kind of reduce that a little bit. Uh, so there can be problems. Uh, and I'm going to show you guys one of these, an actual problem that you need to fix. And I had trouble finding one because our economy is actually doing really, really good. Uh, if you look around our states, most of our uh, buildings are doing fantastically well. I mean, look at Pennsylvania here. No issues. Uh, the steel mills, it looks like there's an issue. There was an issue at some point. They lost some cash reserves, uh, but it's a small, minor problem. It's, it's really not much here. Uh, there's no no real issue. They're, they're making a weekly balance. We're good to go. Most of our buildings are not having issues, so I had to look a little while to find one uh, before I finally found an issue, one that does need to be fixed, does require player input. If you look at the chemical plants here in Indiana, uh, they are set to not produce the explosives. And they're only, so they're only producing the fertilizer, and the fertilizer is too cheap. And we could change them to instead produce some explosives, but that's actually going to fix their issue. Uh, they're still going to have a shortage here. In fact, it's going to be a worse shortage. It's going to put them in a worse problem here uh, because now it requires another good. Uh, they're going to have they're going to have coal. They're going to have more sulfur. Uh, so this is a problem. Uh, sulfur and iron is too expensive, while fertilizer is too cheap. So this uh, chemical plant here cannot produce any money. So they're, they're firing their employees. They barely have any employees at this point. They have no cash reserves. This building is doing horribly. So this is a problem that does require player involvement. We either need to reduce the price of the sulfur or iron or you know, get the cost of fertilizer up by you know creating more demand uh, in any of these locations by making them use more fertilizer. Uh, we can easily do that with the production method. So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is an issue. Uh, but uh, this, you know, over here is not. It's not a problem, guys. Maybe we just want to reduce it a little bit, in which case we construct one more building. Uh, so that's why I like the gradual changes. I don't think you should do big old huge radical changes because uh, things adjust so much that you just don't know how it's going to react in this very complicated economic system. It's, it's really not as simple as it, it might seem. Uh, there's a lot, uh, a lot to it. And so you make these huge massive changes and you don't really know how it's going to affect it in the long run. So we'll do it in DC here. So we'll do it there. Uh, that's just one, and then maybe somewhere else that doesn't have uh, too many. Like, let's say Georgia here. We'll do it in Georgia and see how that's going to affect things. Uh, but yeah, uh, just make little minor adjustments uh, like that uh, is, is the way I typically find it to be to be better. Uh, so yeah, we'll see how expensive fertilizer gets. 
Uh, but yeah, I did want to address those two matters because both of them have been getting brought up in the comments a lot. You know, who should we attack next and also why I'm making the uh, gradual adjustments rather than making, you know, huge construction orders. Because uh, typically it's just not necessary because uh, you're not trying to drastically reduce the price unless you are. You know, uh, for instance, case of, in the case of the uh, transportation, we are trying to drastically decrease the price. We're building a ton of them. Uh, so another bear sided events. Again, we'll see the same events here on the second time. There might be a few different ones we see, but for the most part, it's it's many of the same events, guys. Uh, so we're going to do the, the We Shall Hunt It. And it looks like this time it went wrong. The expedition attempted to hunt the bear, but it went wrong. So instead, we gain peril. Uh, this one's going to go... Uh, Completely differently than the last one as far as peril goes as you can see we're doing pretty bad. It's reached its uh, medium peril level must be careful So we need to take any options that might reduce peril. So we finally did it guys What's this the third time finally got the dedicated police force passed took forever? Uh, but yeah, we got it done And just took so long, but that's going to uh, decrease the uh, power of the sudden planters by quite a bit their clout uh, so, yeah, they're not going to be too much of a factor uh, because of uh, all the other things we've done combining with that, with the institution. Uh, so what we want to do now is invest further in it, but we don't actually have the bureaucracy, so we do need to uh, take care of that. Uh, so we'll probably get some buildings, some uh, government buildings constructing soon here. Uh, so both something for bureaucracy and also we have not reached our cap here yet I don't have to reach the cap but uh, you know obviously we'll get the tech tree faster but it's, it's really not much of a problem getting through the tech tree I find that you get through it uh, as a country that starts uh, already with many of the techs unlocked like the United States there's really not gonna be any issue getting through it in a respectable amount of time and, and often you can't even use uh, all the stuff you're getting so we finish up this slavery debate it's successfully completed Remember, we had to have a uh, slavery banned for 10 years to complete that. And this uh, little movement has disbanded as well. All right, excellent. So no more political movements creating radicals right now. And we got our tech. Okay, so we also have an event. And it looks like Theodore Farnsworth of the Royal Folk has retired. He wasn't our president, was he? I don't remember who we got. We got Abraham Lincoln. Uh, as president. Okay, uh, yeah, I, I don't recall seeing him, him win that, but yeah, apparently he, he is our ruler. Maybe I talked about that in previous episode. Been a couple days since the records, so maybe I forgot. Uh, I know we talked about Abraham Lincoln coming in here uh, when he was what, in his 20s or whatever. That's when we saw him pop up. As far as how he's affecting us, I don't know if we ever looked at this. Uh, probably not if we didn't look at him being president. 20% uh, improve relation speed, negative 20% political movement, radicalism, so that's helpful. Uh, that's not affecting us as a country and 20% authority. So those are there as, as effects on the, the country level. Uh, so we get the steel frame buildings. So this gives us these benefits here, basically more infrastructure. Uh, also, we're going to get a bunch of production methods. So the urban center ones, uh, this is going to require more glass and steel. We're going to want to change those up. That also increases employment, increases services. I don't know how we're doing on services. And then we'll get these steel frame buildings for the construction sector. Uh, so this is going to require a lot more goods, tools, glass, steel, and explosives. But it's going to increase the amount of construction we have quite a bit per level here. It's 10. Uh, so that's one reason why it was good that we didn't we didn't uh, build any more construction sectors. Uh, now we're just going to get this through a production method. If we had had a different construction, uh, a different level of construction sectors, had more of them because we built so many of them. Uh, then we wouldn't be able to just straight up change these over. Uh, that does produce a lot more employment as well. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be more expensive, so we're going to need to reduce the cost of many of those goods, particularly steel. I can see steel getting quite expensive uh, if we change these over, but we're going to. So those are the two production methods we got here. We also can now construct the Statue of Liberty. Uh, so yeah, we're going to want to to do that since it does give a lot of bonuses for New York. It gives us prestige as well, which is always helpful. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and, and get this done, guys. Uh, well, I guess we do have this event. We can take a look at this real quick. So we got a great vintage of wine being produced here in Pennsylvania. We can say make an exclusive product for export, increase in prestige, or increase production to meet the booming demands. It's a plus 50% uh, building wine output. Uh, we'll go with that. Yeah, we'll go with that, guys. All right, so we do need to pick another tech. Let's go and see what we want to work on. Uh, we have, I, th I think, a couple years we can go to war with 
with Metzo, Metzco again. So we could look to see if there's anything here that we'd really want. I'm not really seeing anything because we've already gotten the, the breach loading artillery. So with that in mind, I don't think there's anything else here. Uh, let me take a look at the society text and then we'll go into the production ones to see if there's anything we'd rather have uh, there. It's got socialism, got cameras, increasing prestige. And this is uh, a helpful one that we're already getting through the spread. I'm not seeing anything that we really need at the moment, guys. I suppose we can get the identification documents. Uh, this is also helpful as well, the mutual funds, because it's going to give a, a plus 10% minting, which is going to be incredibly helpful for us because we have so many gold mines. So we already get a lot of minting and also allow us to have the publicly traded production method. So we might want to do that because that could produce a lot of money for us, uh, particularly as we see more and more of the uh, gold rushes. Dynamite would be useful. There's a lot of useful stuff here on the level three. So let's go and do this. Uh, we'll, we'll get the, the mutual funds, guys. I can see that being useful. 24 months to get that completed. Uh, I think we complete those, yeah, a little bit quicker as well. Uh, it's a couple months quicker. So yeah, we'll research some, some societal level text here. Oh yes, we have things to do uh, because we just got, got some stuff. Uh, so with the construction sector, so if we change over to the steel frame buildings, it is gonna be incredibly expensive. And you can see that we just don't have the ability to do it with the, the price of goods right now. We need to get some of these goods up to more expensive, or excuse me, to a cheaper cost here. And so what it might be best to do is to, to only do this with a few of them. Like let's just take like New York, for instance, and just do them. And you can see that's already gonna ramp up the, the cost of explosives and steel significantly just with that one. So we should probably work on, on those, uh, those goods first then in that case. So we're looking at glass, explosives and tools, I believe, are the ones that are gonna be the most expensive here. Uh, glass, explosives, tools, and steel. Yeah, steel as well. So yeah, I think we should go ahead and start working on the, all those so that we can do something to those uh, construction sectors, get them producing a bit more. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and, and work on all those. Uh, so we will start with the, I guess we'll start with the steel, as we know where we, where we wanna build that. It's gonna be in Pennsylvania. Uh, so we probably wanna get like, two levels, but we're going to spread these out. We're going to get two levels of everything, uh, and that'll, that'll kind of help. Um, it won't be enough, but it'll help so it's not too expensive, I think. Uh, so we'll get two levels of everything, and we're going to spread it out, and I'll show you guys how we're going to do that in a minute. Let's get them all first. Constructing, figuring out where we want to put these. Uh, we could look at the places I already have them. Not a lot of profit here for the, the glassworks right now, so let's instead... Oh, here, here we go. Uh, so th this is not the only location, so you have to have these ones, but still... Not a huge profit here. I guess you could build one in Maryland. But let's find somewhere else that has the uh, ability to construct this. I'm thinking Florida. Yeah, we'll do one in Florida. So we got two levels there for the glass. Uh, the other things we needed were tools. So we're gonna wanna do two levels for the tooling factories. Uh, so maybe one in Georgia and one in Alabama. Sure, why not? We'll just do that since we already have those there. Okay, so with the explosives, we could just change those production methods up. I think with this, we'll just build one of these up and then what we're gonna probably wanna do, I mean, just, there's not much of a profit to be had here. Is this gonna be the last thing you wanna build? It might just be better to change the production methods up as soon as we, we do that and then we'll see how much we even need at that point. Yeah, I think that's a better way to do it because we've already seen that those ones are, are having issues. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna make some adjustments here and only build, we'll build them like this where you get so basically build one of each before we, we start on the next one. All right, so looking good. We got plenty of stuff to, to construct here now for some time. And uh, just slowly getting things done. What was the other thing we got? Oh yes, Statue of Liberty, we need to get that. Uh, so Miracle of Life, the expedition is welcome to the middle night. We've seen this event. Okay, so let's go with the minor progress, guys. Try and get this completed. Uh, really hoping that when we complete this again, we'll actually get the Oregon border dispute you know, completed as well. We'll have to see. Again, I'm not entirely sure what's what's going on with that. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and get the Statue of Liberty building. I mean, we could just gone into New York and did it that way as well. And you can only build it in the one location, but uh, I kind of feel like we should prioritize this, honestly. I mean, it's the Statue of Liberty. I and mean, we already got those railways building, so let's put it right under that one. Like so. All right, so that looks pretty good. And uh, just keep on working on this this construction. 
uh, particularly the rail network, though we might tick some of those other things above the rails. We'll, we'll see how it uh, adjusts. I think that's still the most expensive thing in our country, and that is really expensive. It does need to be fixed. And got a couple events here that inefficient agriculture, same old one we've seen before. Uh, can we lose opinion with them and still, yep, still keep them loyal? Okay, so that's probably what we'll do. Though getting migration attraction to Kansas would be helpful. You know what? Actually, we're going to do this one. Yeah, we're going to get some migration going to, to Kansas. Uh, the steel railway cars is currently spreading to us. And then we got the new quest as the expedition advances. Uh, yeah, this is another one we've seen. So we'll go with the imperative to find a, a settlement one. So here's that follow-up event. And this will allow us to reduce that peril, which is really high. Uh, this option is because we're traveling with a baby. They have offered us some provisions for the baby and its mother, and it results in us getting both of those. So that's very helpful. It'll reduce the peril by a little bit and get us the minor progress, so clearly the better option there. Uh, so one advantage of uh, having done that, that one option where we kept going with the baby. Uh, so snow on the ground. Got another event here. Let's go with yeah, probably heed their warning. We don't want any more peril. The Ripper, gruesome murders. This is the New York Ripper. Uh, the Gazette News reports a series of horrific murders in New York. According to the article, the police are powerless to stop the murderer who they dub the New York Ripper. So you can read all this for flavor. Uh, we'll say we must bring the killer to justice. This is going to increase radicalism from standard to living decreases. And it's going to enter this uh, journal entry as well, we can take a look at it, see what we need to do for it. This is one that seems to always fire. Uh, so it's just the murder needs to be caught. There's nothing we need to do specifically, uh, but we can improve our odds by investing in the police uh, police institution. Also, we got the ships of the air notifications. This is uh, completed by researching zeppelins. So we'll have to do that. The Indian removal is still here. I thought that should be gone since we got the Trail of Tears. That's interesting. Usually, uh, or at least in my previous campaign, again, I don't know that that one was working entirely right, but yeah, this went away once I uh, had gotten the Trail of Tears. So not entirely sure what's going on there. So the snow clears up. The expedition can now continue. All right, excellent. Uh, so let me just double check on how long we have to wait again, since I don't recall. I thought it was 52. Yeah, 52. So about a year. A uh, year and then we'll be able to do another one. So not that long, guys. Uh, we've already gotten through the majority of those five years. Uh, a stop on the way. Uh, don't think we've seen this one. With the low temperatures of the mountains, the expedition finds a perfect meadow to take shelter near the river and far enough away from any other village to not disturb their land. An encampment using cottonwood lumber cut from the riverbanks is suggested by Simon. So we can say the perfect place to build a fort. It'll reduce the peril. I don't know how much peril we actually have at this point. Yeah, low peril. And the expedition will be slightly delayed. Or you say we can't afford this delay. We'll gain progress, quite a bit of it, but uh, we're going to get peril to the point where it'll have high peril, I believe. Yeah, I guess we'll just do this one and reduce the peril more. It says we still have a uh, low peril, though. Explorer's life for me, an insurgent group has emerged within the expedition, and two of the men have sneaked out in the middle of night to go to a liquor store. So these men need some discipline. This will reduce the peril again, or they just needed a break. We'll gain peril and minor progress. Yeah, we just reduced peril, so let's go with something that gets us some progress. And that's weird. Did it actually reduce the peril? Maybe I read that wrong. I thought it... Re increase the peril, but clearly it reduced it. Maybe that's not working properly. Uh, mountain sighted. Again, another event we've seen here. Let's just get the progress trying to get this completed if we can. Uh, yeah, that's right. I did want to take a look and see if we needed to keep building the rails immediately. And it does look like we should build more, but what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and build some of these. Oops. And then we'll uh, come back to the browse here. But I'd like to make those adjustments to our production methods. Uh, we do have the 
There's another production method we had gotten. Oh yes, that's right, the covered markets for the urban center. So that'll help with services. I might wait until services get too expensive since steel and glass are already a problem, so we won't change that one up. I did want to take a look, because I couldn't remember what the, uh, the other production method was. So yeah, if we see services get too expensive, which they will, eventually they'll get really, really expensive. And we'll have to, to do something about that. Uh, the gold has been depleted in South Dakota, unfortunately, so now we've got that event. And let's just say unfortunate. That undiscovered plant species. So we just want to get this progress going. And when the earth opened its mouth. Hmm, well we have no apparel, so I feel like we have no time to waste. It looks like we got some progress. Right, excellent, so doing pretty good here, guys. Uh, so, should hopefully have this completed soon. So we see it happens over here. And whether or not the Oregon border dispute will in fact be completed. Uh, so let's go ahead and do, I mean we still have the baby, so I wonder if we can do that again. I'm gonna do this one again since it was so beneficial. And I assume we still have the baby. Yep. Wow, very helpful. So now we're almost done. But now we have medium peril. Hmm. But it reduced it. That's strange. Yeah, I should have said that we had a high peril before. Maybe we did have higher peril and it just didn't say that? That's what I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah, there, there's some little minor issues and stuff in the game. But overall, it plays pretty good for a Paradox game at launch. And we had that one crash. I think we had maybe, I don't know, three or four crashes total since I've been playing it. Uh, so you got the Swollen River. Uh, I feel like we've seen this one. As so we can say, onward, 50% chance of a safe crossing or uh, better to be safe. With the medium peril, probably best to not have our raft capsized. So we're just gonna say better to be safe in this instance. Cause we're almost done guys. Like just one more little bit of a uh, progress and that should be everything we need. Uh, so there is a diplomatic play that just started up. Let's take a look and see what this is about since it does say that we're involved. Okay, so this is not uh, over here in the Americas. So therefore, we're gonna stay out of it. We can just go ahead and declare our neutrality. Don't wanna get involved in any wars with the British if we don't have to. Uh, looks like the Statue of Liberty is just about done. Again, that'll be really, really helpful for New York. New York is gonna get getting like a huge population once I get that built. A lot of people flock to it. Uh, a new quest. Did we see this one? Yeah, this is the same one. So we'll just keep on doing this. Since we've seen how beneficial that is once you have the baby up with you. The Minnesota Flood. Uh, so the local riverbanks have burst in Minnesota, destroying homes and taking lives. We said the state will have to figure it out on their own. They'll get 25% devastation. That's the same devastation you get uh, from warfare. Uh, so pretty negative overall. Or we should put some money into a relief. For five years, we're going to pay a lot of money. And uh, there's still going to be devastation. That, that's way too expensive, guys. I know we got some money to play around with, but yeah, that's just too expensive at the moment. So we're not going to do that. All right, so the Western Frontier Expedition has been completed. But did it complete it for here? It did, but now relations is not high enough. Well, we've checkmarked it. That's what's important. Uh, we can easily increase the opinion. I guess we can take a look at what's going on over here. So now this is a different event. I never got this before. The Oregon Trail. So that's what needed to, to be gotten for the Oregon border dispute. But I didn't get this last time. I just kept getting the, the same Salt Lake one and yet it's still completed for some reason. Again, I was on a, a pre-release version of the game, so you know, things were you know buggy. And we maybe weren't uh completely ready. But yeah, I never got the Oregon Trail event. But we got it this time, and that's what uh you know basically completed it. After a long and artist journey, the expedition has finally come to an end. The expedition has managed to map the entire length of the Oregon Trail. So this is what you needed. But again, I never got it. Or maybe I got it and then I just missed it. If I had it on speed five and I just played through it, I guess that's a possibility. Like I said, I was kind of playing fast, trying to make progress, so maybe I just missed it. It's not impossible. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna get 20% prestige. But I'm pretty sure it was just the, the uh, Salt Lake City one over and over again. Uh, Cause I, did, I had to do it three times. Uh, peaceful intentions. A few days after being sent on a reconnaissance mission, members of the expedition come back announcing that they have found a native village, which the group can find aid. So this is uh, tied to that expedition, which is no longer going, so it doesn't matter. Um, so I read that because I didn't know what, what it was. Uh, I thought that uh, we were done with that. The Ripper, a cryptic letter. 
Police in New York have received a letter allegedly written by the New York Ripper. This cryptic note might hold the key to uncovering his identity. Okay, so a little bit of flavor text here. We say perhaps the university can help. Now, I really like the little events like this, by the way. They're pretty cool. The police will be more likely to catch the killing. We will lose some of our authority. I think we got a little bit to play around with it. And uh, the political strength of the academics will be increased. Or we say the arcane symbols are indecipherable. Yeah, we're going to go with this one. And we can do that because we have a level 5 university. So we're going to go with that. Try and get the ripper caught. Uh, so I don't remember when that was. Let me just, I know it was this year. But what month? September. So September, we'll be able to start another diplomatic play against them. Uh, yes, and I didn't uh, do what we needed to do here. In order to complete this, we need to begin improving relations with Britain again. Get them back up to 20. We're almost there, anyways. And why are we still getting these events? I thought we were done. Yeah, I think this clearly is kind of broken, honestly. I don't know, man, because yeah, you don't even have the expedition anymore, so that doesn't make any sense. It really shouldn't be there. All right, well, we'll just say, you know, get the progress, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, I don't think that's working right. I kind of felt like this whole organ thing was not uh, not working correctly in general. Uh, so we got the relations up to 20. That did complete that. And now Great Britain has agreed to our reasonable terms and has ceded control of Washington, Oregon, and Idaho to the United States. Uh, so yeah, it was nice that we got it done that way. Now we're back to colonizing over here, trying to get the rest of Idaho colonized. That's going to be a slower process, though, because remember we did uh, decrease that institution a bit. And somebody's importing our engines. Okay. Uh, I bet engines are pretty expensive now with the importation there and well, maybe not. But yeah, all the, the extra rails we built as well. Tea. There's now a little bit of a, a demand for tea. It's not very high, though. Same thing with the opium. It's not much of a problem. But yeah, there's actually a little bit of a, a demand for this. Let me just take a look. You know, these are just pop consumption here. It's interesting that they're demanding it. What I'm thinking is it's somebody who is um, uh, fascinated with the... That's not the word I'm looking for. Obsessions. That's right. They're obsessed with it. Uh, so, yeah, what I'm guessing is that maybe the British people, because I'm pretty sure that the, the English have an obsession with tea. So maybe we got some English pops here, which are demanding tea. It could be the same situation with the opium too. Somebody moved here uh, that's obsessed with opium, where their culture is obsessed with with the opium. Uh, and you notice we got all this when we built the Statue of Liberty. This is going to increase their pop growth a lot due to migration more than likely. Although we're looking at it here and there's actually people leaving. So maybe not. Hmm. It could be migrating somewhere else. We have a, a few states that have become locations of, of uh, you know, great migration. And looks like we no longer need to do that, of course. But we'll keep it going, I suppose. There's no reason to, to stop it. Uh, so now we're just waiting to, to attack Mexico, I believe, because we did complete this, so that's done. Uh, so now we want to complete the, the two Manifest Destinies ones, which will be done with uh, a war in Mexico. Uh, so yeah, that's the next thing we're going to be working on. I suppose we could try and get that tech there eventually. Did we build the military up to the place I wanted? I feel like we did. Yeah, we got 20 battalions, but has anything changed with the Mexicans? No, they still have the same number. Uh, so we should be fine in that regard. I'm hoping to do the war without having to raise up any conscripts. That's the goal anyways. Uh, just use those 20 units. And it looks like we're not done with this. Clearly not. We'll just keep on doing this option here, even though it is kind of expensive. We're doing much better on uh, money at the moment. Yeah, money's not, not too bad. We're actually building it up, despite the fact that we're still constructing, uh, and that we don't have anything extra in the investment pool. But we're getting 20000 from the investment pool right now. Uh, so this is a proposal for a trade agreement with the Brazilians. We're going to decline that for now. Uh, you don't want to do too many trade agreements. Uh, so uh, let me just see what we have finished up on the construction. So we still need to get the glassworks done. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish that glassworks up and then we can go ahead and take a look and see how this would adjust. Obviously, a lot of those haven't been built yet. Iron is incredibly cheap, by the way. Too cheap. In fact, I bet that's really hurting iron mines. A, 
Yeah, that hurt the iron mines quite a bit. Uh, but the steel mills will create more of a demand, but yeah, not enough. Yeah, this is still going to be very high, so I think we're going to have to wait until these construct before we actually uh, switch this out and get more construction. And that's okay. And that would cost us a lot up here as well if we uh, have all those really expensive goods up there. So we'll just wait. We'll be patient. Get done. Uh, and then after this, we'll take a look at, at how our economy looks. Uh, yeah, as you can see, we're still having the, the trouble with the transportation. Very high demand for transportation right now. Uh, so we're able to get the reduction of the bureaucracy population costs and the 10% uh, influence. Excellent. And some of these important ammunition. And again, that, that's, that's one reason, guys, uh, why those costs are going to fluctuate so much with those military uh, goods. Is every time somebody goes to war or starts getting ready for war, they're going to start importing from us. And that's going to Im impact the, uh, the cost quite a bit. we got an election coming up here. And the Democratic Party still has all of those interest groups. Unfortunately, none of them have decided to leave. And so therefore, they are still projected to win as of right now. You know, we never did start another law. My bad, guys. We didn't need to do that. We finished that one law, and then we didn't we didn't do anything after that. Uh, so yeah, it makes sense to go ahead and start working on something else because there's a lot of stuff we want to, to do here. Uh, so I'm kind of thinking the citizenship next, though it will radicalize some pops. And it's only going to please the intelligentsia who already really like us a lot. Maybe we need to further reduce their power a bit before we work on this. Just trying not to, to radicalize too many people at once. So we might want to wait. I mean, we might be able to get it passed without issue. Uh, it, it's not that it's going to take too long. It's more like just worried about the opinion. We could just say screw them and pass it anyways, though. So yeah, we could do that. And it does require the slavery banned in order to do those. That's what I, that's what I thought. So you do have to work on that first. So yeah, we could work on that and go ahead and do that first while we have our current government. Again, it's going to uh, result in a lot of radicals. We'll also get that penalty with the evangelicals, but not the bourgeoisie. Okay, uh, but we'll lose the bonus that we're getting with them currently. So there's that as well. You know, I think that's fine if we want to go ahead and get that passed. Because, uh, you know, having our current citizens laws, citizenship laws is also creating quite a bit of radicals. Uh, if we just looked at the number of radicals we got in confirmed discrimination, uh, 45,000. So almost the, the most we've got from anything. It's really just standard living decreases, which is higher, which is, that's typically always going to be the highest thing. So yeah, let, let's go and change over to this, guys. Uh, we'll start working on it. We'll see how it goes. Obviously, going to piss some people off there. And so with that, we're going to get 10% less education access and 10% uh, the 10% bureaucracy that we were getting, we're going to lose that. And then we're going to lose influence and 100% radicals from discrimination and that xenophobia. Well, it makes sense considering the fact that we're trying to get rid of racial segregation. And there is a, uh, a political movement to try and stop this. And it's pretty high radicalism, pretty decent support as well. This could cause us problems getting this passed, guys. We'll see. We probably should have reduced their power just a little bit more before we tried to work on that, I suppose. Uh, let's just see what happens. We'll see if we can get it passed or not. How many issues it causes. Uh, we've gotten the repeaters. All right, so that's the repeating rifles. So you can create more small arms. That'll be useful for the war with Mexico, which we're actually ready to do now. Uh, yeah, we could do that at this moment if we wanted to. So let me just see how things are going here. Uh, obviously, tea would be really expensive, you know, if we actually had any bio orders. It's 0.28 right now, so it's not a problem. When there's just a few goods that are causing a problem, there's still no reason to, to deal with it. I did want to see if there's anything here that we might want to adjust. I, I saw earlier iron was really expensive, but it looks like the steel mills have, have fixed that problem that we were facing. All right, so I think we're, I think we're good here, guys. I'm curious if there's anything we can do about coal when it comes to the, the PMs or iron. We can look. That's a no for the coal until we get the, the dynamite. So can't adjust that. And what was the other thing I wanted to look at? I already forgot. So it was coal. Uh, iron actually is gotten a little bit more expensive now. So we could go ahead and uh, make an adjustment there. And then the tools as well. That was the other thing. All right, so we'll take a look at those. Uh, so let's see for the iron. We do actually have the ability to change over here. This will produce quite a bit and it'd be really, really cheap. So probably don't want to do all that at once. 
let's just do one here. Nope, that's the only one. It's been done. So we want to do we'll do New York. Yeah, I think that'll work out nicely. Bring down the cost uh, just a little bit. And we'll take a look at the tools, though. I think we've probably done everything for the tools. Yeah, we've done everything for the tools. So not surprising on that front. Is there anything else you might want to look at that might need to adjust? I think we've done everything for the the motor industry. I could double check. Uh, I know we can bring grocery price down, though, with PMs. Because, yeah, we have some options here. If we want to change out, maybe not all of these, I think that would reduce the cost by too much. Yeah, that would result in it being extremely cheap. Uh, so yeah, we could just do like, I don't know, Illinois or something. Yeah, that'll bring down the price a little bit. Uh, so maybe do one more location too, maybe Tennessee here. Yeah, we'll do those two. And that'll bring down the, the cost of groceries for us. And then yes, I did forget about the last one, Motor Industries. Let's find that. And then uh, see if there's anything we can do adjust here. Just just that one. No other options at this moment. Okay. It's not very expensive, so it's not that much of a problem. But as we build up these rails, it is going to get more and more expensive. All right, so we'll wait to the, the new year here. And then we'll, we'll uh, start our... I mean, I guess we could do it. We'll do it in January. That's when we'll do it. We'll get the election done. You see the Democrats have won. As far as reforming our government... Legitimacy is pretty high uh, for the Whig Party, so I don't really feel any need to to change this. And you see that their support has actually continued to decline for the Southern Planters. Uh, armed Forces, about the same. Evangelicals, it's declined a bit, but still pretty close to the same. So not too many adjustments here. But yeah, I think, uh, I think we're currently fine. Let me just see if anybody wants to join. Nope, nobody wants to join the Whigs. So yeah, I think we're going to go. I don't think we need to make any adjustments there. Keep things as is. 75% is fine for the legitimacy. No problem there, guys. All right, so we're gonna start this diplomatic play here in January, and that did enable us to get that 10% minting from the mutual funds. All right, excellent. Uh, and again, I think we're gonna do some more in here. Won't go all the way down to level four, obviously. That's too expensive. Uh, but I think we're gonna do the identification documents as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and work on that next. Let this play a little bit too far. I meant to do that right on the first. Also, we had another journal entry. Sorry, we got the uh, Metropolitan Police. You need to get uh, the turmoil in the District of Columbia equal to 20%. We'll also have the law enforcement equal to 5 uh, And then we have the public trading as well. So we can get that completed. We got nine years. And that would require us to change up 75% of all eligible buildings to publicly traded. Uh, so that's the one of the laws for ownership. So if we just want to take a look at that real quick, if we just went like glassware, oops, my bad. Uh, that's the subsidizing. I don't know if I've ever shown that, but you could subsidize any building. And that means that if they're uh, facing a, a loss, then you cover it with government funds. Uh, so for instance, with that one, uh, you know, that one chemical plant here, if we wanted to make sure that they're able to keep producing, but you can see it's already gotten better as we've increased the cost of fertilizer. They have more employees making a bit more money. So we should probably increase that further. Uh, but yeah, we could always subsidize to cover their losses. That's an option. But yeah, if you look at this, you can see uh, that they have the publicly traded option and that will result in more capitalists. So that's an option. If we want to change up ownership, uh, we're not going to do that right now. That's not really our concern. Our concern is war, uh, though. Before I forget, you know I will. Uh, let's go ahead and just change up some of these real quick with the uh, the farms. Move them over to soil enriching just to further increase the price there. And you know we're gonna get more grain out of this too, so there's that advantage. Uh, let's maybe just change District Columbia. That's already been changed. New Jersey. There we go. So we'll just make sure we're doing these smaller adjustments for right now. All right, so let's go ahead and start up. Oh, you know what? Let me just double check here where our infamy's at. Okay, so we're looking pretty good here on infamy. No infamy at all, so that's not a problem. Uh, we don't want that to get too high. I'm clicking like all the wrong things here. Uh, we don't want that to get too high because of the fact that uh, more countries are going to get involved in any wars we do if we do a lot to get too too high. Uh, so let's do the Conquer State, Mexican, Colorado. I'm not seeing one for Utah here. Oh, there we go. Return state. 
So we could do that because you get a bit more. Uh, the overall provinces there, a bigger chunk of Utah. But uh, Colorado's, that's where all that gold is. So I think we're going to actually do that. Utah's got the gold too, but we're just going to do Mexican Colorado. So if they do. Oh, wow. Why are all these countries willing to join up against us? At the start of the play, we will face these enemies. That's interesting. So we're in a bad diplomatic situation right now, guys. Uh, we got not just Russia this time, which that's what I faced last time, but also France and the Hudson Bay Company. This is not a good diplomatic situation, guys. We cannot start a war like that. I am not looking to fight. We might be able to get some of them out of it, but I don't know that we could. Hey, I'm not looking to fight France, Russia. Was there a civil war happening in Portugal here? Yeah. But yeah, I'm not looking to fight uh, France, Russia, and Canada, and Mexico. That's way too much, guys. That would be a much larger conflict than we're looking to do. So we might not be able to do this right now. I'm not entirely sure why everybody's so willing to to face them. Let's just take a look if this is a diplomatic situation. Defensive packs. Mexico has wisely... That's what they spent their time with. They... Now that's an interesting development here. And look at the AI. That was clever. So the AI gave us Texas, said, hey, have Texas go away. And then during that period, they built up a system of defensive packs to protect them from any further aggression from their northern neighbors. That was intelligent. And was feels like an intelligent action here by the AI. Interesting, I like it. Even though it obviously negatively impacts us, but that's what a player would do. You can't beat uh, your neighbor. You don't have the resources they have. You'd get a bunch of uh, allies to assist you. And that's exactly what they've done. So too many defensive packs at this moment. Yeah, we can't uh, we can't attack Mexico right now, guys. There's just too many defensive packs there. This would be too large of a conflict that we uh, would not be able to win easily. Uh, maybe we can win it. But why would we want to do that? Yeah, I just don't think that's wise, guys. Uh, so no war with Mexico, unfortunately. We're going to have to wait until the diplomatic situation changes some. It is what it is. I suppose it could attack Canada. <laughs> then you got to fight the British as well, though. So it's something to consider in that regard. Uh, we're going to attack the, the British, and they might also have. Yeah, I don't know if they'll how many allies they can bring in, but they might. I'm not seeing any straight allies, but of course they have all their, their puppets. Doesn't necessarily mean they'll bring them all into the conflicts, but uh, yeah, that's that's an interesting development. That's something that, again, happened in my first uh, campaign. Um, you know, as the U.S., we had we had Russia get involved, but that was just one one country, and it became a much larger conflict than I was wanting it to be, just based on that. So South Dakota, same deal now. Their mines are shutting down. All the gold that was to be found has been had, and now all that's left is the, the more difficult stuff to get. So all those people that flock there, many of them are probably going to leave, some of them will stick around. And looks like, yeah, the French are now interested in the Midwest region. So yeah, the Europeans are just too involved over here right now. Unfortunately, we need to wait until they start fighting each other. <laughs> that's what we need to wait for. Uh, once they start all their conflicts against each other, which always seem to happen. Or they have their, their civil wars, their revolutions. I see a lot of revolutions happen here in uh, Europe. Alright, so the Cherokee voice. So I don't know that I've seen this event before. Yeah, this is new to me. Uh, the intelligentsia has been championing the passing of multiculturalism starting in their own ranks. A Cherokee politician may take over leadership in the fight for the culture's acceptance in the United States of America. So we can say equality starts here and we'll get the new leadership modifier increasing enactment uh, success chance by 20% and we'll get a new character. Or we can say Abraham Lincoln's leadership is needed in these uncertain times. Oh, okay. So it doesn't say this. I mean, it kind of says it up here. But basically the intelligentsia, the leader, will be replaced by a member of the Cherokee which is what I would probably do, because I think that'd be interesting. If it wasn't Abraham Lincoln, I don't want to replace Lincoln. He's a really good leader as far as his stats go. Now, Lincoln's no longer our president, so we're not getting all those those bonuses from him, but I'm hoping he'll become president again. 
Uh, if we can get the Intelligentsia powerful enough they can win an election, we can get him in, in office. I mean, maybe this character would be good. Maybe he'll even be better, but we don't know. And it's not going to be easy to get somebody better than this character. So I think we're just going to have to go with the 10% in this chance. 20% would be nice, but yeah, we're going to go with that, guys. I don't like that it doesn't show you who you're getting. You don't, you don't get to see their stats. Maybe they'll be good, or maybe they'll be garbage. Uh, so right when we were talking about going for Colorado on that to buy a play, it uh, looks like their gold mines are now uh, depleting. So we're seeing that all across the West, those gold mines uh, being depleted. And I think that's only a uh, mechanic for gold mines. I don't think there's any of that for the uh, the other types of of mines and such. I don't think you ever deplete them. However, if you're a modder, you can add that in. Uh, it's basically something you can extend to uh, to anything. Uh, so we're still building these. Let me just see what the cost would be here. I mean, everything's still pretty expensive. We might just make the adjustment once we finish these, because uh, right now they don't actually have all of their uh, employees, those ones we constructed just yet, so that's another thing to consider. We'll just wait till we get, we get those constructed, and then we'll uh, go ahead and get uh, get this switched up, and, and then we'll just kind of make adjustments based on uh, on where things are sitting at that point. Uh, so is, is anything really expensive? Nothing is, is too bad. Suppose you could work on explosives if you wanted to. But yeah, nothing's too bad, guys, so let's go ahead and do the, the things I was trying to do, uh, getting the, the bureaucracy situation solved uh, because of that law that we passed. I believe that that's what increased it, uh, increased the usage. And then we also would like to get more universities as well. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and work on, on both of those right now. So let's go for the government administration first. Just continue building in places that have a high number of, of pops. I don't, I don't think we have... Yeah, we don't have any needs anywhere just yet. Uh, South Dakota will probably need one, so we'll get one there. I think one in Ohio as well, and then one in Pennsylvania here. Yeah, that, that looks fine for now. Uh, and then we also want to get the universities. Uh, so let's go ahead and get several universities going. And we're just going to base this on where we have them, I suppose. We'll do one in Pennsylvania. You know, let's do Florida. Why not? Well, I guess I might not have the uh, the pops to work it there, but yeah, we'll do it in Florida. You can see we're, we're building Florida up a little bit. Working on them, getting them some, some buildings. All right, so once these two finish up, we'll change up our construction sectors and get a lot more construction and be able to build a bit more at a time. Uh, we'll make use of that money because I feel like our gold reserves is now pretty decent at 4.99 million. It's not too shabby. Uh, we did get the steel railway cars. So this is the production method for oil rigs, which don't have any, and also a different production method for the railway. Uh, we're not even really using those. That's increasing the uh, amount of transportation you get. Uh, but I don't want to actually use the production method because I prefer to build railways uh, because we want to get them all the way across all of our states first. So that's been the method we've been using for decreasing the uh, cost of the transportation. Uh, but right now, obviously, working on other stuff. Trying to get all this constructed. Uh, so the tooling workshop is the last thing we need to work on. Uh, I think we're fine to go ahead and change up these production methods now. Yeah, let's go ahead and change them up. Uh, do we want to do them all at the same time, or would we like to do some... Probably let's change them up a little bit at a time, because, yeah, that does make it uh, really expensive. Uh, so this is really just explosives, if we just do the one. And we can easily uh, fix the explosive situation, uh, because we got the chemical plants that not all of them are making use of. This here, so if we just change this up, you know, we'll produce less fertilizer, which you know, obviously isn't worth as much, and then uh, produce more explosives. So many, so many more explosives, in fact, that explosives are going to be very, very cheap. Though I don't know if that's accounting for the adjustment that was just made. All right, so with that, you can see we already got a bunch more construction. And nothing is too expensive at this point. Yeah, we're looking pretty good here. Okay, so we can go ahead and change up a few more of these. Because again, I'd like to change them all up. So we'll do this one next. And just kind of do this a little bit at a time. You know, actually, let's just do them all. And then we'll just adjust uh, based on those prices, those changes. Uh, so you see steel's gotten a little bit expensive here. Yeah, so all the, all the things that we are building have gotten too expensive, with the exception of the tooling workshops. 
which is interesting because uh, that's the one we haven't completed the second one that we built. All right, so yeah, a lot of these are too expensive, guys. We do need to make some adjustments. We need to get the explosives fixed, the steel, and the glass, and then we'll start building the, uh, the railways again. And uh, we can get more done now because we have 72. So increased construction quite a bit. Not quite doubled, uh, but but yeah, quite a bit more construction. And we didn't even need to build any more construction sectors. We just did it through the production methods. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and start working on this, guys. Again, it's going to be uh, explosives, steel, and glass is what we want to uh, get sorted out here. Uh, so with the explosives, we're going to do that in the uh, chemical plants here. And it doesn't matter which one we build in, if we build in these. Now it's saying that there's not going to be enough value here. Probably because the fertilizers were so little. So what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and make fertilizer more expensive uh, so that we can build these without any issues. But we might want to go ahead and build this in another location too. If we can find anywhere that has... I mean, why not in Texas? Yeah, we'll do Texas. So we're gonna build uh, two of these, I suppose, for now. And then let's go ahead and, while I'm thinking about it, change these up so that we'll have more of them requiring the fertilizer. All right, maybe just do, I could just do all of them. And just really ramp up the cost of fertilizer. Grain's gonna get stupidly cheap though. So that's something to consider as well. As grain might become so cheap that these can't be profitable, that could be a problem. But yeah, we'll leave that as is for now. Uh, we already know we're building our steel mills. We're gonna keep on getting these over here in Pennsylvania. Get two more of those. And then the, the last thing we had to do was glass. So let's get some more glass works going. We'll see if any of these would be uh, profitable. Looks like Rhode Island's the closest, but let me see if there's not somewhere else we might want to build. There's not a lot of peasants over here in these locations. I guess you got Washington, Kansas. Yeah, you're starting to see some, some population in some of these areas now. Not a lot. Yeah, we could build in, in one of them. We could go ahead and build, I suppose, in North Dakota. Yeah, we'll get this going in North Dakota. All right, so get some, some glassworks. I don't know if I only built one. Yeah, it looks like we only built the one there. So we need to build one more. And we might just do here in Rhode Island. Even if it says it's not gonna be profitable, I think it will be. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how accurate those are. Uh, so yeah, right now we're, we're currently working on all this stuff here. So that's probably not where we should prioritize. Let's go and tick this down for now or Let's actually just go and tick these up to the top. It'd just be easier to do it this way. Tick those up to the top. Uh, we'll finish one of these here. I mean, these are almost done. So we'll finish these two here. And then again, do the same thing we did last time. Where we kind of tick these down or whatever. All right, so that looks pretty good. Get one of each. And we finish up the colonization of Idaho. So no more colonization going at the moment. But we still have that one level uh, of the institution because you know we can't get rid of it unless we pass a law. Which, speaking of laws passing, we just passed multiculturalism. Uh, so we got that done. It wasn't that difficult to do. I wasn't too sure if we'd have problems uh, from this here. But you can see that they are now trying to restore it. So, uh, yeah, they're still going to stick around. Uh, but yeah, the radicals aren't too big of an issue right now. Uh, so with that, we did get these these penalties to them. But we did make the intelligentsia quite happy. And we got an event, the Cherokee Nation. With the passing of the Multiculturalism Law, the Indian Removal Act is annulled, and the Cherokee people are free to live on their ancestral lands. Uh, so we're going to annex the Indian Territory. This is one way uh, to go about doing it. Somebody had told me that in the comments that you automatically get that. Uh, annexed and, and then you don't get the infamy uh, for doing so uh, though. I don't think we really have any infamy right now Yeah, so we could be burning off some or whatever, but yeah nice way to, to get that done guys uh, So with that law passed we need to work on another one. Uh, so let's just take a look see what we want to get next uh, So we could change up our suffrage though We'd actually be moving it backwards. So we haven't changed up a lot of this many of them aren't options uh, We could do the property women that would result 
and quite a bit of opposition here, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's a lot of opposition there. How about to the welfare? How many people are opposing that? Just the southern planters in that case. So maybe we'll do that, the poor laws. That'll help our pops out quite a bit as well. Uh, just results in us giving some welfare payments. That enables the social security institution. And that's the, the bonuses it'll get, is the 10% welfare payments. And you get less political strength when receiving welfare. So I think that's what we're going to do, guys, because there's not really any other options here that we could easily do without pissing off too many people. Uh, so yeah, we'll do that. All right, and of course that's going to cause some uh, problems with our bureaucracy, but we've already got some stuff here that we're working on to try and improve that situation there. And unfortunately, that is actually going to have to be the end of today's episode. We got those those done there. Uh, but yeah, that's going to have to be the end here. Uh, the French want a defensive pact. Yeah, I'm not really looking to get involved in Europe in case they get attacked. And I'm not worried about anybody attacking us. I'm more worried about, uh, you know, a bunch of people joining in on wars against us if, you know, such countries that we might want to attack have defensive packs already. So that's not really going to help us on this front. We need, like, an alliance with somebody who could help us fight the Russians and French. I really want to, don't want to fight the French, though. They're major trade partners for us. Their economy would probably collapse. They get so much stuff from us. Uh, they'd be really hurt if they did go to war with us. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I don't want to, to fight both the Russians and the French, at least not without some assistance. Uh, so really, the, the main options there I can see is the British, or Prussia, or Austria, I suppose. Uh, so if you could get a great power ally, then maybe that would make it a more feasible conflict. But I prefer to just wait until they no longer have the defensive packs now. Maybe that doesn't doesn't happen, though. And, and we don't want to wait forever to get this war started. So yeah, let's see what we can do there, guys. Because uh, it's not a good situation there uh, with them having so many uh, potential allies. Uh, but do hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. It was uh, a little bit longer. It should be a little bit longer. Uh, I didn't know how much to record because I did talk a while in the beginning about that uh, about those two issues. And then also I had like a bunch of phone calls. My wife called me like three times about different things because uh, it is uh, Halloween tonight. Uh, so yeah, she was calling me about uh, some stuff regarding regarding that. Uh, so yeah, I didn't know how much to, to add. So it might be a, a really long episode. Maybe it's too short. I don't, I don't know. Uh, there's too much to, to factor in there. Uh, but yeah, I do hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you leave a like on it, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Do hope to see you on the next one. And thanks for watching.